my first GameCon was a huge success, and it also tried to kill me. GameCon 4 was some of the most fun I've ever had playing HeroScape. I had so many fantastic games against so many great players that I finally got to meet for the first time. Content creators, event organizers. I got to network with <coughs> the lifeblood of the community, and I paid for it. But we'll get to that in a second. <coughs> oh, God. Oh, why am I doing this? Last week, SCAPECON 4 wrapped up, and I wanted to make a video covering my experience at SCAPECON 4. This will be sort of a hybrid battle report, hybrid event video. I didn't want to film individual games because that seems like a huge pain. And also, I didn't want to film individual games while I was there. And I did film some clips for other projects. But for the most part, I wasn't focused on my YouTube channel. I was focused on HeroScape. So I don't have a lot of B-roll. And in fact, since I'm feeling very lazy, I will probably just be putting uh, clips from the high quality live stream that they had running. Big and Bullfrog casted almost the entire weekend, tons and tons and tons of games. Uh, so I would recommend going back and watching that if there were any tournaments that you were interested in or any formats you thought might be fun. But I think I'm just going to slot this on the green screen behind me, or maybe I'll just have the green screen. Maybe I'll just be standing here like an idiot. We'll see how much effort I feel like putting into this because I'm not feeling super hot. But all in all, Scapegun 4 was pretty great. As of right now, I currently have the most number of wins out of anyone in the convention. Now, that does exclude uh, three-headed Hydra events at the beginning, which was a team event, uh, and it also excludes night events and the world championships. But still... For main events and afternoon events to be at the top feels really great and i'm i'm really proud of how far i've come uh to that one random internet commenter that told me i needed to win uh, one or two in-person events uh to have a valid heroscape opinion uh thank you you were my motivation throughout the whole tournament i felt like i had something to prove i suppose after playing mostly online it's funny because i goof around so much uh and and I have trouble taking the game seriously. And I've also said publicly that there's a skill ceiling uh, and, and a lot of the game comes down to luck. And I think I'm a very lucky person. Uh, so that works out in my favor. But I felt like I had something to prove almost while I was there uh, to show that I, I am actually a good player as much as I, you know, goof around uh, online and, and in my YouTube videos. Uh, you know, try not to get the game too seriously. As Ken would say, one of the event organizers, it is a game for eight-year-olds. Uh, so coming out with the most number of wins uh, was certainly fantastic. Uh, there is one more game to be played between Veggie and Chris Perkins yet that they didn't manage during the event. Uh, so maybe Veggie uh, will rise to my level. And also, you know, excluding the world championships uh, and, and night events and things like that, I think Veggie and a couple other players had me beat. But still, extremely happy with how the tournament went out. And my, my win rate as well is also very excellent. Not to mention, uh, I won a main event. I won the Delta Bring 2 Strike 1 event, the very first championship on Thursday. Uh, I got this really cool trophy for it, and I'm I'm really proud of this. Uh, it looks fantastic from Trek C3D, uh, so that was something I was really excited about, and I'm going to go through those games really quickly now. I brought the old Haggerty special, Heracles VC unit, and a bunch of Varkannons, another VC faction. Heracles was paired with three squads of Stingers, a really solid classic range squad, whom I'm sure many of you are familiar with. This combination has gotten me to now three out of the four finals that I've played this in, and this has gotten me one of those championships now, a main event at Scapegun. This formula works because the Varkannon faction is notoriously complicated, and even if you understand mechanically how they work, that doesn't necessarily mean you know how to play them optimally. Now, I have a ton of experience with the Varks. I also have a ton of experience with Heracles, so this is really just my bread and butter. I won a couple games simply because my opponent didn't want to play with the Varks and opted to choose something unoptimal, and I also came out of the draft on top a couple times because I or my opponent struck the Varks, making for an imbalance between Heracles and the rest of the stuff because Heracles is notoriously bad into any small or medium squad. We started out through the top cut 4-1. I lost a very close game against Caps, who drafted and played well, but managed to win every other game, including both for and against the Barks, which is really important in a bring-to-strike-one, knowing you can outplay your opponent 
with any army that you have. We got to the top cut and because of my strength of schedule I got a buy for the playing game so then it was on to the top eight. This game against Dachshund was probably my closest game of the entire top cut and it wasn't necessarily my closest game of Scapecon but there was a point where I thought for sure my opponent had it in the bag. See I had chosen to pick Varks with my first pick and I had thought that they would be all right into his dwarves army. I figured I knew how to play the Varks very well. My opponent seemingly wasn't familiar. And after all, they are a slow moving melee squad. And there was Shadow on the map, which is really good for Dark Claws, plus two really nice purchases for my one range unit. However, it turns out that on paper, the axe grinders are really good into the Varks. And usually, if something is good on paper, they're also good on the board. I really struggled to get kills on the Axe Grinders. They were blocking everything. And at a certain point, I thought, well, we had a nice run to the top cut. I was just happy to have made it that far at all. And then we had a stroke of miracle luck. We managed to kill four Axe Grinders in a single turn to wipe out an order marker, which was huge because that let me rush in to his B11s, a VC range cleanup squad, and kill two of them before he got to take an activation and with that turn it was easy to clean up the b11s and derek with my last four arcs i had almost nothing left on the board so that incredible string of luck let me get to the semifinals once again facing off against caps now it's interesting in a pod draft situation when you've already played your opponent because you both know how the pod draft went and how the game outcome went but we actually ended up taking different armies and for what it's worth i thought his pick was a little less optimal i think because he didn't want to have to play the same game over again and i totally respect that i had heracles stingers into his little dwarves his vc dwarves and rough time now heracles into rackheim is a super solid end game i opened up stingers to take out as many of his dwarves as i could and they did a really good job uh there was one thing and i'm gonna feel guilty about this until the end of time that I made a technical mistake on. Neither of us caught this, but the Shieldsmiths have an ability where they shouldn't be able to be moved by any power. Now, I tried to throw a dwarf and successfully did and got the kill as well and also managed to successfully throw a second dwarf with his labors, uh, not do the actual damage, but just move him, which is pretty significant for the Shieldsmiths because they get two extra dice if they're already engaged. Now, we were caught by Biga <laughs> later, uh, while it was just quite a little bit too late to move back because he'd already made some return attacks. He should have gotten a couple more attacks of four off on Heracles, who was at full life still. I think I feel pretty confident saying that I would have won the game anyways because Heracles killed Rakheim without taking a single wound. But it does feel pretty gross to me knowing that I had an advantage in an endgame there that I shouldn't have. We both caught it. It had been a long day. It was evening at that point, but I, I do feel bad about that, even though I think I still could have pulled it out regardless. These things happen, and we did end up winning the game and moving on to the finals. Now, this finals was legendary. This was against Earl of Sandwich, Ben, who had played an excellent tournament up until that point. He was 8-0, and oh, which meant that I had some work to do. We played on Crumbling Castle, and I lost the dice off. My opponent wanted to pick first, so I got to pick second, and I had to strike. Now, this map is pretty good for Varks, and I felt like I just had to strike them because I didn't think there was an answer in my opponent's armies, which was Glad Blast and uh, regular old Stingers and Drake AOA. Glad Blasts aren't very good into Varks because they can only Cyberclaw small or medium figures, and Drake AOA is much more inferior than Heracles, and I didn't even think Heracles could stop Varks on this map. It's pretty vertical, and the road is helpful, but with how fast the Varks are, they would have dominated the high ground. So I struck the Varks. My opponent took Glad Blast, and because, again, Heracles is useless into small or medium figures, I took his 4x Stingers and Drake AOA, who I got to play with for the very first time, at a Scapecon Championship. I was so excited about it. In fact, I was so excited that I actually led Drake AOA out for the entire first round. Now, it felt pretty stupid at the end of the first round when he had his whole army move out of his start zone and I had one guy stuck with one Cyberclaw on the top of the map. I missed my first grapple 
And I also missed my first attack of 7v4. So Drake AOA didn't really show up to play for me personally, but there was a really complex interaction that ended up mattering a ton anyway. See, Ben had won that matchup four times already this tournament. The opponents all led stingers, struggled to get through glad blasts, and by the end, there was enough glad blasts to take down Drake AOA. Or, even though Drake AOA is really solid into glad blasts, he had one cleanup figure, Lilja, a VC unit, that just beats down on heroes, and there's not much you can do about it. So I opened with Drake to try and stall the glad blast, make things more complicated than the straightforward games that he'd won four times already in the tournament. And he did spend an order marker on Lilja, moving her out of the start zone to hit Drake AOA. I hadn't even touched my stingers yet. I was still firmly sitting in the start zone, and I thought I was at a huge disadvantage. But that's when I noticed something. He had pulled all the way to the right of the map, moving everybody around to control Dagmar. Now, Dagmar is a very good glyph, but the timing of it only matters once per round. The other glyph on the side was Manic Loden, a custom glyph that adds plus two to any d20 roll that you make. The stingers are notorious for their stinger drain, and most competitive players would tell you jokingly, oh, the stingers actually have an ability because it's pretty common knowledge that the risk reward is typically not worth it unless you're already losing. Blowing up your own figure and not getting to attack is really bad, and the reward of three extra attack dice isn't super significant. But if you had a plus two to your rolls, you are much, much less likely to blow up one of your own figures, and you're much more likely to succeed on that roll. At the end of the second round, after I had lost initiative, I hopped on getting the plus two and rolled for Stinger Drain the rest of the tournament. This extra dice allowed me to churn through Glad Blast incredibly quickly, who were struggling to get good quality range shots off as the Gladiatrons weren't able to quite engage as quickly as the Blastatrons needed them to. Now, the Blast did kill quite a few Morrow Stingers, but my defense held, thankfully, into two attack dice from range after all the Blastatrons had climbed to height, and Lilja spent two order markers trying to kill Drake, which gave me a lot of extra free time to clean through that whole side of the map. Drake AOA mattered a lot as essentially a punching bag. He didn't do anything for me. In fact, he didn't kill a single figure, but he soaked up a lot of attention while my stingers were killing the rest of his army. The matchup that I wanted. Manning Loden also won me a pretty critical initiative, allowing me to get even more attacks off than I would have otherwise. And I managed to finish off Lilja with still five or six stingers left on the board. Kintella Gwyn wasn't quite able to do it, and so my opponent called the game there. Really well played by my opponent, uh, but I'm quite pleased personally with my ability to see that glyph, see that opening, and also just be willing to take the risk and play. What you would think would be unoptimally rushing one solo heavy hitter out into a plethora of squatties just to just to make things complicated, just to complicate the game. So I won my very first ScapeCon championship with Sergeant Drake AOA and my old Haggerty special, which I was really pleased about. Honestly, I was so exhausted after that, and I had no idea what was really going on, but it was an excellent day. I had so much fun meeting everyone, and we moved on from there to day two. Now, day two, I woke up feeling a little tired, a little fuzzy, uh, but I just thought, you know, we had played essentially 11 hours of a single tournament the day before, and it was just exhaustion, not sleeping well in the hotel bed. These things happen, you know. Everyone gets con fatigue. We rolled out into the second championship, Reverse the Whip. Now, this was my first ever Reverse the Whip tournament, and I guessed a little bit low on the power level. My army only ended up winning one game the entire day, uh, which was pretty embarrassing for it. But I managed to win that game, and so I managed to go 3-2, and two, and that was fine with me because it meant I got to play in an afternoon event. Reverse the Whip is a format where every other round you hand your opponent your army and they hand you theirs and you play that way. Now it can be very complicated depending on your matchup. In fact, that's where most of the luck comes from. On the very first round with my Vipers Q10 army, I faced a Counter-Strike Samurai army, which was super awesome. 
I didn't get Counter-Strike that much, but Q10 wasn't quite able to crack through their defense quick enough before they took him down and easily cleaned up the game. In my second game, I had one of the most fun games I've ever played of SkateCon against I Just Work Here. It was super back and forth. My opponent handed me Goblin Cutters, Cyprian, and Brugrutz into my own Major Q10, and I thought, wow, more bad matchup luck. But I played it very clever. Valda was on the map, which was super helpful for me. And I opened Goblin Cutters, and after losing an entire squad of them to Q10 without doing anything, I decided, all right, time for Cyprian to get a little nasty. And nasty he did. With the move cliff, he rocketed across the map and into the start zone, killing everything in sight while Q10 tried to pound him with wrist rockets, but wasn't able to kill him against the free lunch that was the Vinok Vipers, healing him at least one, if not two, per turn. But at a certain point, after killing probably half of the Vipers, Cyprian was looking a little nasty, and I knew my opponent had an order marker on Armok Vipers to get an attack of four from Vinok Warlord and three more attacks of three from the Armoks, which would surely finish him off if given the chance, even if I healed one or two more. So, I did what any smart vampire would do, and I ran away. I mean, I tactically retreated all the way across the map to the other cliff where one last little goblin cutter was sitting and I ate him. He was so tasty and the look on my opponent's face when I killed my own figure was priceless. See, the goblin cutters weren't doing anything for me because their scurry only works against normal attacks and Q10 with his machine pistol into their one defense is able to kill an entire squad in a turn, no problem. So what were they doing for me other than being Cyprian food? So I ran all the way back to my start zone with my next order marker to kill more goblin cutters and heal him almost back to full health. It was time to send Cyprian out again, finish off as many vipers as he could, and he made a valiant effort, but in the end, Q10 was going to chase him down. So my Brukrets had to move out, and Q10 was a pain moving around the map kited me from a huge distance taking out one or two at a time i thought i might never get to him and in fact by the time i managed to get to q10 just as the screen closed around him i only had a couple brute ruts left my very first hit q10 put three wounds on him to kill him and from there it was still close because he still had a full health being out warlord and a couple arm locks left it was only with my last two Brukrutz that I was able to finish off the Vinok Warlord and even that was with a four skull attack doing three wounds from half health to dead to kill him. It was an incredible game. It was so much fun uh, and I had an absolute blast playing Cyprian. The, the dynamics between all of the pieces of that army made that reverse the whip really an incredible event for me. Oh god. I'm getting old. That afternoon event was Delta Failed Negotiations. I was very excited to play my army. It was Kurok Elemental's army. And the way this format works is every army gets to pick a diplomat. They get plus one attack and defense against common squad figures. Your diplomat is allowed to start in the center of the board, and there's an order marker process for determining where you get to start. Without any common squad figures, I essentially negated my opponent's bonus. And my thought was to put Odinashi as my diplomat instead of something valuable that might get killed by an Alistair or a Mogrim or Kaimanawa or Cyprian or something like that and say, you know what, screw the format. We're going to play this on my own terms. And the elementals did work. I managed to go three and one that event, losing only to the pirates, EJ, who refused to take searing intensity wounds and regular wounds any other type of wounds. He didn't want to die. It was intense. But it was really good games. Uh, I'm very happy with how that played. And had an excellent tournament overall. I think I tied for fifth there. Uh, so really an excellent event. I played one game of that night event. The C plus and under. I lost the first game. And and I went to bed. Because I was exhausted. <laughs> I, it's the, I had said, you know what? We'll see how it goes. Didn't go well. Went to bed immediately. On to Saturday, and this was one I really wanted to do well in. This was the cheese event, and I played Nope, Green Skills Times 2, and Raylan. 
the way this event worked was you were only allowed to bring 400 points for the morning and in the afternoon in the top cut you could add a couple more points now i didn't make the top cut unfortunately uh, i went three and two uh, i beat a knight's army very comfortably in the first round i lost a very close game to 10th in the second round i beat fourth mass in the third round i beat 10th in the fourth round and i lost the 10th in the fifth round and at that point after playing my fourth weight than fire army in a row i actually was quite ready to be done now both of those games that i lost were extremely close uh, and i absolutely had chances to make the top cut but it did work out in the end because i got to make an excellent run in the afternoon event which was delta general wars mercenary Typical General Wars format with the Delta pricing, but you got to bring one army card that was different from your main general. So, for example, I brought Kato Katsuro and a whole bunch of Ashigaru. My one mercenary was Arkmer, who was just filler, and I had to drop one Ashigaru Rifleman and one Ashigaru Yari. Now, I maxed out the 20-figure limit and then some, uh, and my opponents all had really solid armies as well. I was genuinely surprised with how well these did, so let's get into these games and why I thought the Yari could make it so far. First of all, just the number of activations was really difficult to keep up with for anything else on the board in Delta, especially with the General Wars restriction. I even played a couple Weight and Fire armies. I beat 4th and 10th with Ashigaru, with one defense Ashigaru. And that was simply because the Yari were super obnoxious and able to get a couple kills by moving across the board. Or the Riflemen were able to get lucky and sneak a couple dice of 2 through into 4 defense or 3 defense. The 4th and 10th games were really dicey, but in the end, I had Kato as cleanup and managed to do pretty well with him to close out both of those games. My games went pretty quickly as you can imagine with one defense figures I didn't roll too many defense dice because they were either dead or my opponent blanked and then I didn't have to roll I beat dwarves which was a pretty comfortable matchup even with mogram forge hammer uh, a six attack special from the yari is gonna crack through tough really easily and having three defense into four attacks from six range is really not that great so that was a pretty comfortable win as well. The afternoon events are different than the main events in that there's no top cut, but at the end there were three 4-0 players because so many people had played in this tournament. Now the way we decided to do it was the bottom two players with strength of schedule would play uh, a semifinals game, an informal semifinals game to get to the finals. I was really lucky, my opponents all did super well, and so I had the highest strength of schedule, so I didn't have to play that game. Vegetarian18, who was also very high up in the wins at that point on Saturday night of ScapeCon, won his game, and so I was determined to play this finals game to try and keep my lead on Veggie. Veggie brought a whole bunch of Death Chasers, Narek, and Mipurksa. Super solid army, really fun to play with, looks like a good matchup for me on paper because two defense base for the Death Chasers is not super great, especially when Narak is having to contend with range shots from the Ashigaru. Now we did land on Song of the Walrus, which has snow for Narak, and that was helpful for Narak. Eight activations, again, into a three squad bonding is not going to do a lot. Paralyzing Stare from Mibirxa is practically useless because if you hit the stair, and drop me down from one defense to zero. Do I really care? No, I do not. But it still actually ended up being very close because I was very focused on turning through Death Chasers and reducing his activations. I got a couple in circles off from the Yari, both on Mipurksa and on Narag, actually. The one on Narag did a ton of damage. The one on Bursa did practically nothing. And so at the end, Mipurksa was still alive racing around pinging my ashigaru who were desperately trying to finish him off because if it came down to a full life kato and ardmore versus me Berksa, i didn't trust that end game me Berksa could easily one shot ardmore whether or not he gets the paralyzing stare and kato is kind of slow and me Berksa is incredibly fast in fact me Berksa could probably run circles around the edge of the map for him for years and so that was maybe an unwinnable endgame i needed to finish off me and sure enough 
with the last two riflemen taking their shots, we did the last wound we needed to kill me, Berksa, and take another Scapecon championship, a very hard fought battle. I was thrilled with how well the Ashigaro had done. I mean, when was the last time you've seen Yari on the board doing anything? Typically, in competitive events in Delta, Ray Lin paired with straight riflemen is super solid. And Kato, you know, can be useful, but still commonly paired with Ray Lin, right? To get them that extra two defense, which is super helpful for them. But I felt like in general wars for this point and figure limit total, they didn't need him. And sure enough, they didn't. They were just able to shoot and stab their way through anything they could with eight activations, even into ranged weight than fire armies, they were still doing excellent. So I was really happy with how that army played in Delta, really happy with my performance. We ran 6-0 and through the tournament to get another championship, and we were ready to head in to the world championships. I didn't play any of the night events that evening because the regular tournament had already run late. In fact, I think it was almost 10 p.m. when Veggie and I finished our championship game. And I also wasn't feeling super great. Again, I was convinced that this was con fatigue. This was staying up too late. This was playing too many games. This was just being around too many people, talking too much, talking too loud. You know me, I like to talk. I knew I could push through. We've been pushing through all week. Everything would be fine. We would wake up feeling rested and refreshed. And I went to bed ready to kick ass. And I woke up feeling like shit. And I knew something was wrong. I was actually sick. This wasn't con fatigue. This was illness. Now, I didn't know at the time what it was. And so I thought, I'm still going to push through. This is the ScapeCon World Championships. And I am going to fight for glory. I'm going to do my absolute best. And I got my ass kicked in the first round. I genuinely barely remember anything from Sunday. I don't think I drafted very well, but legitimately it would be hard for me to tell you how I think I drafted poorly because I have very little cognitive thought from that time. I think I should have picked rats instead. Uh, it was all a blur. Five minutes, not enough time to draft when you hadn't looked at the pools, which I didn't look at beforehand because I went into this wanting to take each game at a time and not worry about the world championship. So I didn't do any prep for the world champs at all besides a quick conversation with Veggie after our game the night before. Uh, and it was not enough. Uh, George, Dragon Ruler, thoroughly beat me. Uh, congrats to him. So I got knocked out in the round of 16 at the Scapecon world champs, which was fine and really a blessing in disguise because we ended up heading back early instead of saying Sunday night and leaving Monday for a 10 hour drive home like we'd originally planned. And in hindsight, that was good because I got COVID. And that's why I've not uploaded this until whenever this gets uploaded this. I haven't even filmed this until a full week later because I have felt terrible. This was my first time getting COVID. I had a four and a half year streak and those losers at ScapeCon, they infected me. Uh, no, it was it was totally worth it. I had so much fun. I would get COVID again to go to ScapeCon. And hopefully next year, I think they're putting some things in place that maybe will help prevent that. But yeah, I felt really bad. I had a fever all of Sunday and Monday. Uh, I've been congested and sluggish. A <laughs> little bit of a cough. It was really intense. And in hindsight, it's insane that I even got out of bed to go play that Juroscape game. I didn't want to, and that's how I knew it was bad. Normally, with the, the sore throat and the congestion all the days before, I was still really excited, for the most part, to play every Juroscape game, but that one, that one was tough. That one was tough. So that's where my Scape Gun journey ends, for now. Sick, pathetic, lying in bed. But in the end, it was worth it. I got to meet so many cool people. I got to play so many fun games that will live in my mind forever. It is truly an incredible event that you can't replicate anywhere else. You cannot find that much concentrated passion for the game anywhere. Walking through the halls, hearing people talk about matchup specifics, 
sitting around tables talking shit about Reddit, eating meals with all these players who have hopes and plans, who run tournaments, who make customs, who build maps. It's phenomenal. Anyway, I've been talking long enough that I really want to sit down again, so I'm going to leave it off there. This is my very loose battle report, very loose escape con report. I wanted to get something out. I know this is a little late already, but overall, I had so much fun. Uh, I have a lot of cool content at some point that will be coming out uh, that I just haven't gotten around to editing because all I've been doing on the couch all week is watching movies. Thank you so much for watching and please consider subscribing if you'd want to support me going to ScapeCon next year. That doesn't directly support me at all, like financially or physically, but emotionally, emotionally it does. That's all for this year. Maybe we'll see you at ScapeCon 5.